Hey, Dr. B here. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to calculate z-scores using a simple formula, how to use a z-score table so that you can answer questions about percentiles. What we want to do is we want to convert raw scores like an IQ score into its respective percentile. So let's try this out. So let's say that we have someone with an IQ equal to 110. All right, now what we know about the population, the population mean is 100, okay? And the standard deviation for the population is equal to 15. Now, if you don't know what these Greek symbols that I'm using here are, you need to go back and check some other notes. Okay, so that's what we know, that the population mean is 100, and we're asking about an IQ of 110. I'm a visual guy, and so is everybody. So let's take a look at what this uh, represents here, okay? So we know that pop, uh, intelligence is normally distributed in the population. What does that mean? It means that right down the middle is that mean IQ of 100, and the higher up you get, the less likely scores are, and the, the, the lower the IQ is, the less likely those scores are. So I'm asking about an IQ of 110, and this doesn't have to be to scale, but 110 is somewhere up there above 100. And so my question, again, is what percentile would somebody be in if they had an IQ of 110? What does that mean? All right, so they are here under the curve. And so what, by percentile, we mean what percent is at and all the way down and below, all right? So what percentage of the population would have an IQ of 110 or less? That's what I'm wondering about, okay? So I want to know what percentile is 110, okay? Now, um, I can already answer the question part way, all right? I know that half of the population is going to be in this bottom half, right? So my answer is going to be equal to the bottom half, 50%, those that, are, those that have an IQ of 100 or less, plus whatever's in this piece here, all right? So that is kind of, that's kind of currently the mystery. What percentage is in that wedge right there? That's what we need to go figure out and find out so that I can add it to that bottom half to give me the final answer, the final percentile. Okay, you with me? Now, to begin to convert that score of 110 to its, the percentile, the first thing we need is a, is a tool. We need a, a tool called Z-scores. All right, so, the, whoops, can't spell. All right, we need to calculate what's called a z-score. Now, z-scores have, um, don't worry about what z-scores are, why they're named, why they're called z-scores. It's just a letter, okay? And so that's not a two, that's a z, all right? So let's call it a z-score. So there's a simple formula for calculating z-scores, and this is one of our simpler formulas, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a score. In this case, it's 110. And to, calc to, to convert that to a z-score, we'll start with that score, and we're going to subtract the population mean from it and divide by the standard deviation. So there's my formula. Z is equal to the score minus the population mean divided by standard deviation. So that's simple, right? Just plug in our numbers here, and it turns into a really simple arithmetic. X is 110, the population mean again is 100, and the standard deviation was 15, okay? So that's equal to 10 divided by 15, right? So my z-score is equal to 10 divided by 16 is 0 0.6666 on forever. I'm going to round that to two decimal places. Z-scores are, are traditionally rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so now I know that the score of 110 corresponds to a z-score of 0 0.67. Now, um, by itself, that's not terribly interesting. You're sitting here wondering, what well, good is that? What, you know, a z-score by itself isn't really much good except for those people that know what z-scores are. 
So we need a second tool to, to, to do something with that z-score, okay? And so in the back of your book, in the back of every stats book, is a, is a scary section in the appendix with a bunch of uh, statistical tables, all right? So no, you know, a bunch of pages that look kind of like this one. And here's the first page of what's called a z-score table. In your textbook, it's on page 100, um, 405. And um, um, it goes on for about four pages. And it's accompanied by some other statistical tables for other needs that we're not talking about here. Okay, now, so... Um, Again, to keep to remember the the big picture here, okay? So um, what I'm needing now is I'm needing this wedge right here. Let's darken it, okay? That's the piece that I need. I already know this is 50%, and I need to know what that mystery shaded area is so I can add it together and have the final percentile. Okay, so um, your z-score table, um, as you see, has sets of columns. Sets of, you know, there's three columns per set, okay? And in what I'm going to call column A, um, let's do it like that. In column A, which is really column Z, <laughs> uh, you have the z-score. So when you, in this case, when you know the z-score, We'll be starting there. We'll look in that column for our z-score of, of 0.67, okay? So it's um, right here, okay? So I've located it. So um, that's in what's called column A. Column B, what I call column B, and what some stat books label column B, as you see in the picture here, gives you um, the the shaded region, okay? It's, it's showing you... Um, Column B is showing you this area here. It's what we need. It's showing you the, the, the percentage of the whole picture that's in that shaded region. In other words, between the mean and your z-score. Okay? So whatever the population mean is and whatever z-score you're looking for, that's exactly what we need in this case. All right? Now the table's set to answer uh, other sorts of forms of questions, and maybe we'll see another example of this later, but it can also tell you another area. It can tell you this area in column C, which is the area beyond your z-score, okay? So column C tells you this region here, the area that's beyond the z-score that you're looking up, okay? But again, we're, we're here to look for column B, so let's just take a look at the value that's there in column B, all right? So column B is equal to a proportion. Now, this is the kind of kick in the pants here. The table is not giving us percentages. It's giving us proportion. Okay, so um, column B is telling us that that proportion is equal to 0.24. I'm going to round it to four decimal places. This table is very, very thorough. It gives us to five decimal places. So two, four, eight, six. If I round that to four decimal places, there's plenty of precision. Okay? Now, um, we had a conversation about percentages and proportions, and I told you that I need you to be able to go back and forth between the two seamlessly. And again, to go from a proportion to a percent, we are just going to multiply that p-value by 100, or even easier still, move it two decimal places to the right. So a proportion of point 2486 is equal to a percentage of 224.86. Okay? And so there we go. We have the we have the mystery piece here. Alright? That column B wedge is equal to 24.86% of the population. So in other words, um, 24.86% of the population has a IQ somewhere between 100, the population mean, and this score of 110 that we started this problem out with. So let's go back to my uh, original picture here. And we now know that this piece here was, is equal to 20, oops, not 28, 24.86% giving me a grand total of 74.86.
And there's the answer. Exactly, 74.86% of the population has an IQ somewhere between, I mean, somewhere below 110. Actually, 110 or below. Okay? Another way to think about this is, is you, this was kind of a, uh, this was to tell, you know, maybe to tell what an individual, let's say you got an IQ of 110 and you want to know what percentile it was, you'd know, oh, I'm in the 74.86th percentile to be precise, roughly the 75th percentile. 70, about 75% of the population has an IQ of mine or lower. But it can also be used kind of predictively. So this is the neat thing about z-scores and these percentiles. We can use it predictively. We could go out, if I was going to go out and randomly sample the, somebody in the population, somebody in the world, okay, and I, I truly was randomly selecting somebody, okay, there would be a 74.86% chance that I would grab somebody in this realm, okay? There's a 74.86% chance that I would grab somebody that had a 110 or less. So you see how we can use it predictively, okay? So, uh, not so bad, I hope. Now you know how to convert uh, any raw score to a z-score, use the z-score table, and find what percentage or percentile is associated with it. Okay? So in the next one, I'll do a real quick example showing you how to do it um, when you need to use column C. There's, uh, as you'll see in a moment, sometimes you need and will wish to use column C. So I hope that helped. Try it out for yourself with another IQ score and determine what percentile that IQ is in. Bye.